Okay, Mark Harrison with the East Bay RC here, and we're going to do a part two of our PID loop series. And in this one, we're going to do the math. We're going to go through the equation and break out what each uh, of the things do. And we're going to write the code. Okay, if you're not uh, keen on doing the math, just kind of stick through it. It's not more than like a minute or two. And the end result is we're going to have a fully coded PID loop for our for our simple box copter example. So if we look at the Wikipedia, you know, that's a standard go-to place for, uh, for these kind of things, we get a pretty complicated looking uh, formula. We get, uh, you, you can see it there, but the important thing is there's a, a couple of things to know. First off, we can simplify this a whole lot. All of this means this is the correction. All of these functions, the error with respect to t, that is useful uh, if you're going to be doing a lot of math and you're going to be graphing out, uh, you know, like a like a graph of the error to see if you're stabilizing or whatever. But we only care about when we're actually calculating a PID correction what the current time is. So all of those E sub T's can just go down to the current value. So what we're going to do is we're going to end up rewriting each of these terms to be a little bit simpler based on those, uh, on, the, on that specific knowledge. And we're going to end up writing uh, some code. So going into the thing, uh, if you recall from the first, uh, from the first series, we're going to have a couple of variables. So I'm just going to initialize all the variables in this column, and then we're going to write the code over here. We're going to have the p value, and the i value, and the d value. And if you look at whatever your GUI is for your controller, you know, you'll, you'll see some values. Maybe the P value is going to be 4.2, and the I value is going to be you know, 2.3, and the D value is going to be you know, 0 0.6. It doesn't really matter what those are. You know, that'll vary you know, by controller, but you'll see those somewhere. But we're just going to kind of assume that those are our values for the, uh, for the box copter. Now, first off, let us look at the first term. We have this is going to be the P portion. This is going to be the I portion. And this is going to be the D portion. So let's look at the P portion first. We have K sub P times E at the value of T. And basically what this is, this is your current error. And what this is, is your P value. And, of course, that's going to be multiplied together. So what we're going to do in our code, okay, this is just going to be one big loop. Of course, the first thing we do in our loop is we read the current value. And we're going to have a target value here. This is going to be like 100. We're going to 100 feet in that first video. This is also called the set point. People call this the set point when they're talking about PID loops. But we're just going to call it the target. So the error is really simple. It's going to be the target minus the current value. And to do the P part of the term is really simple. All we're going to do is we're going to say 
the P, let's see, what did I call that variable? That's going to be the P correction is equal to the P value times the error. Go back and review on the first video if you want to get the intuitive feeling for what that is. But this is all we're doing. We're pulling out the P correction here, and that's going to be that times that. The value times the error. Now, we're going to look at the second term. The second term is a little bit more intimidating because it's uh, it's using some calculus notation. It's it's doing the integral, and when we look, we're saying that it's uh, integrating from zero to t, and it's uh, integrating over tau, which is the sum of all of the times the error of all the times. Now, what that means is <clears throat> we have a curve. And it's got some kind of uh, thing, you know, it looks something. You know, your, your error is, you know, going up and going down. And if you recall from calculus, a lot of the hard work about doing integrals is you start would start out with a given formula, and then you had to figure out what was the integral or what was the derivative of a given formula. In this case, we really don't care. Because the integral is, is basically a number that corresponds to the area under the curve, and if you remember in one of your uh, in one of your chapters in your calculus book, if you took calculus, that one way of approximating the integral was basically just to divide your area up into a bunch of uh, pieces and do a piecewise approximation by summing up what all of the uh, pieces were at those given points. Now this is really nice for our PID loop because what happens is every step through the loop is giving us one of these values. So like we start off here, it's like 25, 27, 30, 31. And the interesting thing is, is if we want if we want the um, the integral of that, all we have to do is keep a running summation of all of these numbers. First time through, if our curve was this big, our integral would be 25. If our curve were this big that we're measuring, our integral would be 52, you know, 25 plus 27. If our integral were this big, it would be 82. If our uh, curve were this big, it would be uh, 111. You know, basically, we just keep a running total. So this makes for some pretty straightforward code. Basically, we have a cumulative error. And what we're going to do, okay, this is this is the P here, and we're going to calculate the I here. And all we have to do is we say the cumulative error is equal to the cumulative error plus whatever this current error value is. So you can see as we're going through time, we're just kind of summing up the cumulative error. If you're too low, this number's getting small, you know, getting negative. If you're too high, it's uh, getting positive. And if you're sitting right around your target, this is going to be, you know, rapidly going to zero because you're going to have subtracted all the way, you know, all the, all the parts that were above and all the parts that were below. But what we end up getting is something really simple. We get the I correction is equal to the integral value, the I correction, I mean the I value, times the cumulative error. Really straightforward. 
All we've done is through the loop, we have summed up the cumulative error, and that is what is giving us the integral which corresponds to the area that's under the curve. Pretty straightforward. Finally, we have to get the uh, derivative. We need to get uh, the, the slope, you know, the value corresponding to the slope, you know, the, the d term. And if you recall also from when you took calculus, you've got some curve, you know, or the other. And basically you pick a point and whatever the slope of that tangent line, if it were here, if it were here, if it were here, you know, the slope of that curve at that point is what the derivative is. Now, the nice thing is we don't really have to care what that curve is because we always have the current value. Remember, each one of these things is one pass through the loop, and all we care about is the current error, what it is, and we can get the slope of the line by having one point off. So basically, all we have to do to get the slope here, for example, is we have to get the current error, and then we have to get whatever the error was last time, and that's going to give us two values that are going to be enough to give us the slope of that line. So basically, we're going to add another variable over here, last error, and then what we're going to do is, for the derivative term, we're going to say the slope of the line is equal to error minus the last error. And then typically what we would do is if we actually were going to express this out, we, it would be like error at the present time minus error of the previous time, error t minus 1. And then what we would do is we would divide that by whatever our piece was here. But since that's going to be a constant for our purposes, we can actually skip that and just get that slope as being the error minus the last error. And once we've done that, it's really simple because all we do is we say the D correction is equal to the slope times whatever the D value is. Those three things there. Now, you'll notice that this doesn't quite work the very first time through because our last error is zero, but since almost instantaneously, you know, that, you know the, the second time through the loop, this will all work, so we can just uh, ignore that for now. And then, of course, we just need to save off here. Our last error is equal to error, so that the next time through the loop, we'll have the current error term which will have been the last error, you know, in, in the in the term in the in the context of the next loop through. So this is really simply all the code that you need to calculate that whole uh, formula there. There's one thing we're gonna do that we want to make sure we're not overshooting or undershooting our error. We're going to supply a maximum correction and a minimum correction. And the idea is this. Say, say for example, like you were trying to launch your, the box copter off to something like you know 10 miles high or whatever. What would happen is all of these corrections would just be huge because we got like a 10 mile gap and what our PID loop would be saying is, oh, no problem, just uh, send you know, 86 you know, thousand million amps to the motor and you'll be to your point uh, you know, in, a, in a jiffy. But of course you can't uh, you know, send you know, that much power without just melting down the battery, you know, probably exploding the whole thing. Likewise, 
there's a minimum correction because like on a quadcopter, for example, you don't want to ever let the props stop because you don't want them to stop and then start spinning backwards and then you may have problems, you know, getting them to spin forwards again. So we'll do something like in our simple controller, we're going to say the max correction is 100. You know, it's 100 percent power. And we're going to say the minimum correction is we'll never let the props spin at less than 15 percent of the power. So what we have to do is just a really simple check. We say, oh, uh, then we have to get the correction. So we're going to say the correction equals basically the sum of these three things, P correction, I correction, D correction. So we're going to say P correction plus I correction plus D correction. And then what we're going to say, we're going to say if the correction is greater than whatever the max correction is supposed to be, then we're just going to say correction equals max correction. You know, if, if, you're, if you're going off the scale, you just make it to the top of the scale. Likewise, if correction is less than minimum correction, we say correction equals minimum correction. Now, once we've got this, the last thing we have to do is we just have to output the correction to the motors, you know, to the controller, you know, whatever you're going to do. And so this is a very straightforward PID loop. This is the, the complete code here, and we're going to implement that in the next... Uh, in the next uh, part of the tutorial when we make our uh, simulation and we've got everything accounted for. We have the correction is equal to the P portion, the I portion, and the D portion, the sum of those. So that's pretty much all you've got to do. We've covered the math, we've translated the math into some pretty straightforward code and if you look at the source code for whatever uh, flight controller or autopilot you're using, you're going to see something that's pretty similar to this. I mean, it'll be a lot more complicated because, you know, you're, you're dealing with, you know, multiple, uh, you, you have uh, your lateral PID loop and your forward and backwards PID loop, and you have a PID loop for the altitude. So it's, it's, it's more complicated, but in general, what you'll see is this code and variations of it as being in the core part of your uh, flight controller. So that is it. That is pretty much what you have to know to understand the math and to write the code for a PID loop.